Hello students, welcome to Physics Fact with a new topic Refraction of light in case of lens In the previous topic we discussed refraction of light at plane surface Next we discuss refraction of light at spherical surface Now here we discuss the refraction of light in case of lens So students what is lens? A portion of a transparent refracting material. Transparent refracting material. That means that material is a transparent material which is bounded by two spherical surface. Okay. The transparent material, refracting material bounded by two spherical surface or maybe one plane surface and one spherical surface is called as lens here refraction takes place then lens is two type one is convex lens another one is concave lens in case of convex lens this one is a convex lens here what happen the middle part is thicker Middle part is thicker compared to the ends. Middle part is thicker compared to the ends. Whereas in case of concave lens, the middle part is thinner compared to ends. Here this one is the middle part and this middle part is thinner compared to that ends. Okay. Here a concave lens is thinner at the center than at the ends. That means at the ends compared to the ends the center is thinner now that convex lens is three type also concave lens three type now go to the types so concave lens the first one double concave lens that means in this case the two refracting surface this one is the first refracting surface this one is the second refracting surface the two refracting surface is convex in nature or the two refracting surface convex spherical surface. So this type of lens is known as double convex lens. Now in case of plano concave lens the first refracting surface any okay any one refracting surface that may be first may be second but one refracting surface is plane. Another refracting surface is convex in nature. Then this type of lens is known as plano convex lens. Now, concave convex lens. That means one refracting surface is concave in nature and another concave in nature. This side. Okay. And another refracting surface is convex in nature and that is bounded. So this type of lens is called as concave convex lens. Okay students? Now go to the concave lens. If the two refracting surface is concave in nature, this one, this side is the concave in nature. Okay. The two refracting surface is concave spherical surface, then this type of lens is known as double concave lens. Now in case of plano concave lens, the first surface or maybe the second but one surface is plane and another surface is concave in nature. So this type of lens is known as plano concave lens. Okay. Now go to the third one convex so concave lens. That means one refracting surface is convex in nature and another refracting surface is concave in nature. Then this Lens is known as convex. So, concave lens. Convex and this one concave. So, convex. So, concave lens. Okay, students. Now, here we discuss some important terms used in lens. So, first one, the center of curvature. And that is denoted by C1 and C2. First one. Students, in our normal life, we use in our real life, we use basically double convex lens and double concave lens. That lens is very thin and small aperture. 
aperture. We use the lens that is very thin and small aperture, very small aperture. This one is the first refracting surface and the first refracting surface is the part of this sphere. Your C1 is the center of this sphere. So this center is known as center of curvature for the first refracting surface and denoted by C1. Okay. Now this one is the second refracting surface and the part of this sphere and here this sphere this one is the center known as center of curvature for the second refracting surface and denoted by C2. Okay student, here this one is the first refracting surface, this one is center of curvature C1, this one is the second refracting surface and center of curvature C2. Now go to concave lens, this one is the first refracting surface and here is the sphere form. So this center is the center of curvature for the first refracting surface and denoted by C1. Okay student? And this one is the second refracting surface and is the part of this second sphere. So the second sphere, this one is the second sphere, the second sphere, the center is here. So this one is the center of curvature for second refracting surface and denoted by C2. Okay student? Now, the radius of the sphere is known as radius of curvature. Okay. Radius of the sphere, the radius of the sphere is known as radius of curvature. As because of the lens is very thin, the radius of curvature may be same. Because of the th lens is very thin, lens is very thin, so that radius of curvature may be same. Okay. Now the line which joining the center of curvature. Okay, the line which joining the two center of curvature. This line is known as principal axis and the principal axis must be go through the optical center, must be go through the optical center. Now what is optical center? Optical center is a point through which if a ray passes through optical center, there is no deviation of a ray of light passes through the optical center. Center, there is no deviation occur. Okay, so this center is known as optical center. A ray of light parallel to the principal axis. This one is the principal axis. When a ray of light parallel to the principal axis incident on the lens, incident on the lens after refraction, it converts. After refraction, the refracted ray converts and meet at one point. That point is called as focus. In case of convex lens, the refracted ray are converged and meet at one point. So, that convex lens is known as converging lens. Now, in case of concave lens, after refraction, the ray are diverge. The ray are diverge, but appears to come from one point. Appears to come from one point, and that point is known as focus. Okay. Now, due to in case of concave lens, ray are diverges. So concave lens is also known as diverging lens. The distance between optical center to focus. Okay. The distance between optical center to focus. Known as focal length. Optical center to focus. This distance is known as focal length. The plane passing through the focus. The plane passing through the focus. And perpendicular to the principal axis. This plane is known as focal plane. Okay, the plane is passes through focus and perpendicular to the principal axis known as focal plane. Okay students, now here we discuss lens maker formula for
a convex lens. In case of convex lens or we discuss about concave lens, in that both case, here we have some assumptions. What are the assumptions? That lens is very thin, the thickness of the lens that is very small, aperture is very small, object which we take that is a point object and the angle due to the incident ray and due to the refracted ray makes very small angle with the principal axis. That's four are the basic assumptions. Okay, now we go to that topic. Lens filter formula for double convex lens. That means the two refracting surface that is convex in nature. Now we take a double convex lens X Y which is placed in a air medium. This one is the air medium. First one we take the general formula so that we take that rarer medium having refractive index mu one lens having refractive index mu2 this one is the denser medium and here for the first refracting surface the ray is passes from rarer to denser medium then for the second refracting surface ray is passes from denser to rarer medium okay now here c is the optical center O, that is the point object which is situated on the principal axis. The distance between optical center to object. Optical center to object. This distance is the object distance. Okay. That object is placed in the rarer medium. Okay. Now O A1 is the incident ray. OA1 is the incident ray passes from rarer to denser medium. A1C is the normal for the first refracting surface. C1 is the center of curvature. The distance between optical center to the center of curvature. This one is the radius of curvature. Now, as the ray passes from rarer to denser medium, it deviates its path. It deviates its path and bent towards the normal. So, refracted ray and the refracted ray meet the principal axis at which point? It meet the principal axis at that point image is produced and take that image I1 because of that image is produced due to the first refracting surface. So we take that image I1 and the distance between optical center to image I1. This distance is V1. So for the first refracting surface, OA1 is the incident ray, A1C is the normal. A1, I1 is the refracted ray. Make some angle alpha 1, beta 1 and gamma 1 with the principal axis. Object distance is U, image distance V1 and radius of curvature that is R1. For the first refracting surface, object distance that is Object distance that is U and image distance that is V1. As object is placed in the rarer medium, we know that the formula that mu1 by minus U plus mu2 by V. Your image distance V1 equals to mu2 minus mu1 by R, your radius of curvature for the first refracting surface that is R1. So here we got one equation. Now for the second refracting surface, take us, this one is the point A2. Okay, this one is the point A2. So for the second refracting
cutting surface A1, A2 is the incident ray. That incident ray makes an angle alpha 2 with the principal axis. Students, you just understand it. Okay. A1, A2 is the incident ray for the second refracting surface. A1, A2. This one is the incident ray for second refracting surface. It makes an angle alpha 2 with the principal axis. That means that beta 1 is equal to alpha 2. Okay. If the second refracting surface is not there, then I1 is the image which produced finally. But due to here is the second refracting surface is present. So I1 is not the final image. Okay. Here for the refraction takes place. Now here. A2 A2 C2 this one is the normal A2 C2 this one is the normal and the distance between optical center to C2 this one is the radius of curvature for the second refracting surface denoted by R2. Okay, so here what happens students? A1, A2 is the incident ray for the second refracting surface. As ray passes from denser to radar medium. As ray passes from denser to radar medium. It went away from the normal. Okay. Here is the normal. This one is the actual path. As ray passes from denser to radar medium, it went away from the normal. This one is the actual path. This one is the actual path. It went away from the normal like this. Okay. Image. The final refracted ray near the principal axis. At that point, we got the final image. Take as I. Okay, students. Here you remember, for the first refracting surface, we got image I1. But if there is no second refracting surface, we got the final image at I1. Because of here, the second refracting surface is place. So, here double refraction takes place and here the refracted ray further deviate and we got the final image at the position I instead of I1. Okay. Now, here A1, A2 is the incident ray. It makes an angle alpha 2 with the principal axis. And the normal with the principal axis that is the angle gamma 2. And here the final image is produced. The angle between the final refracted ray and principal axis that is beta 2. Okay. Incident ray in denser medium. So ray passes from denser to rarer medium. So for second refracting surface. That object distance that is V1, image distance, image distance, the distance between optical center to optical center to I. This one is the image distance take as V. Okay. Object distance V1, image distance V. As ray passes from denser to rarer medium, what happened here? Mu2 by minus V1 plus mu1 by image distance V equals to mu1 
minus mu2 by r. Here, for the second refracting surface, the radius of curvature r2. Put the value of r2. This one is the second equation. As we add equation 1 and 2, okay, adding equation 1 and 2, we get, so here, mu 1 by minus u plus mu 2 by v1 minus mu 2 by plus mu 2 by minus v1 plus mu 1 by v is equal to mu 2 minus mu 1 by r1 plus mu 1 minus mu 2 by r2. Okay. So here mu2 by v1, mu2 by v1 plus minus cancel. So what we got? That is mu1 by minus u plus mu1 by v is equal to mu2 minus mu1 by r1 plus mu1 minus mu2 by r2. So as we convert mu1 minus mu2 to mu2 minus mu1, we take minus common. Okay, so here we take m mu1 common. So take mu1 comma 1 by v minus 1 by u is equal to here mu2 minus mu1 by r1 plus if we take this one mu2 minus mu1 so that minus is common. So minus r2. Okay, then next, mu1, 1 by v minus 1 by u is equal to mu2 minus mu1. If we take common mu2 by mu1, then 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2. So now, 1 by v minus 1 by u, that is equal to 1 by f. So, mu1 into 1 by f is equal to mu2 minus mu1 into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2. Okay, now if we take mu1 in this side, then 1 by f is equal to mu2 minus mu1 by mu1, mu2 minus mu1 by mu1, 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2. So, as we simplify this one, then 1 by f is equal to mu2 by mu1 minus mu1 by mu1. That is equal to 1 into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2. Next, we simplify this one. Then 1 by f equals to mu2 by mu1. That is represented by mu2 1 minus 1 into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2. That means let's make our formula is the formula in which we relate the radius of curvature of the lens with respect to its focal length. Radius of curvature of the lens with respect to its focal length. Okay. Now, as students, if mu1 is the A medium, that radar medium is the A medium, that means mu1 equals to 1. And for the second medium, the denser medium, take us that mu2 equals to mu. Okay. So, as mu1 equals to 1 and mu2 equals to mu, then 1 by f is equals to, okay, mu, put here, mu2. In the value of mu2, you put mu. And in the value of mu1, 1, 1 minus 1 into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2. That means here we got if the first medium is a air medium, so that uh, refractive index of the air medium that is mu1 equals to 1, then we got 1 by f equals to mu minus 1, 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2. Okay, so then you remember the general formula. The general formula is 1 by f equals to mu 2 1 minus 1, 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2. So, mu 2 1, that is mu 2 by mu 1 minus 1, 1 by r1 
1 minus 1 by R2. So, R1 is the radius of curvature for first refracting surface and R2 is the radius of curvature for the second refracting surface. If Remember this general formula. Okay, student?